Hi Lighthouse family, hope you're doing well. I know for many of us, this season of shelter in place just seems to keep going and going with no end in sight. And it has been easy to look to different people or different things to comfort our hearts and to shepherd our souls. Perhaps it's looking to a new hobby, the latest updates in the news, the stock market, Netflix or YouTube. All of us have shepherds with small s's, substitute shepherds that we run to each day for hope and satisfaction and contentment. And so for today, I thought to visit Psalm 23, one of the most well-known and beloved psalms of all time, in hopes that we would reorient our hearts on knowing, trusting, and loving Christ, our good and faithful shepherd. Let's read Psalm 23 together. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today I want to simply reflect on three questions. Do you know your shepherd? Do you trust your shepherd? And do you love your shepherd? Let's go ahead and start with our first question, which is, do you know your shepherd? One of the reasons why Psalm 23 is such a powerful psalm is because of how personal it is. We as human beings all desire and crave the personal touch, the personal interaction. We all hate receiving spam and generic messages, but we all treasure personalized letters or gifts. And here, David the psalmist is describing his real, authentic, personal relationship with God. In the very first verse, David writes, The Lord is my shepherd. David is not talking about God's faithfulness to the world in general or to the nation of Israel corporately, but to David the individual. Charles Spurgeon says this, The sweetest word of the whole verse is that monosyllable, my. He does not say the Lord is the shepherd of the world at large, but the Lord is my shepherd. If he be a shepherd to no one else, he is a shepherd to me. He cares for me, watches over me, and preserves me. And so my question to you today is, is Christ your shepherd? It doesn't matter if Christ is your parents' shepherd, or your friend's shepherd, or your pastor's shepherd. Is he your shepherd? We live in a world where there is more and more confusion between knowing about someone and actually knowing someone. If you think about social media, or reality TV shows, and just the amount of information that you can find about people online. On one hand, it's kind of scary, but also it can be easy to think that you know someone when all you've done is accumulated information about them. And we can easily do the same with Jesus. We know facts about him, where he was born, who his friends were, but we might not really know him or have an actual relationship with him. So again, do you know Christ as your shepherd, or do you just know about him? For those of you who can clearly and genuinely say, yes, Christ is my shepherd, a helpful follow-up question could be, is Christ your shepherd on a daily basis? I think many of us would agree that Christ is the shepherd who saves us from sin and carries us into salvation. But is he our shepherd every day, throughout the day? When you're at home, at work, in class, are you looking to him to guide and shape your conversations, to lead and direct your decisions, to carry your burdens and your frustrations? For David, it was clear that he had an intimate relationship with God. Even in this psalm, in verse 4, he interrupts his reflection about God and starts talking to God directly in the second person. You are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. As David reflects about God, he can't help but to burst into prayer. 
John Piper makes this helpful observation. The lesson we can learn from this form is that it is good not to talk very long about God without talking to God. We should interweave theology with prayer and frequently interrupt our talking about God by talking to God. This leads us into our second question, which is, do you trust your shepherd? I think we all have experienced how easy it is to trust God in the mountaintops of life and how difficult it is to trust Him in the valleys. And yet, one of the greatest insights of this psalm is that the God who leads us to the green pastures in verse 2 is the same God who leads us to the darkest valleys in verse 4. The picture that David gives us in this psalm is not of sheep wandering off and getting into trouble, but one of the shepherd leading his sheep to a valley of deep darkness, a valley that presents much trouble and difficulties. And so the question we must ask ourselves is why? Why would a shepherd lead his sheep into a valley filled with danger and risk? Especially a shepherd who we know is a good shepherd, one who actually cares for his sheep and wants the best for his sheep. This is the question that many of us are probably asking right now. This COVID season is a huge and prolonged valley for many of us, filled with loss, loneliness, frustration, and suffering. So why are we here? I think we can find much help and insight by focusing on the word through. David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the valley is not the final destination. It's not the end goal or the final resting place. It is simply part of the story, a path leading to another location, a better location, a location that is worth going through the darkest valleys. What this means is that God always has a purpose for the valleys of our lives. And sometimes we are able to see and understand the purposes as we go through them. But many times we will have to wait until much later to understand what God was doing for His glory and for our good. It's natural to ask the why questions, to want to know what the reason and purposes of why certain things are happening. And yet in this psalm, David gives us one of the most simple yet profound biblical truths that helps us to trust our shepherd when we are in the valleys. He says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For David, it didn't matter that he didn't know where he was going. It didn't matter that he didn't have all the answers to the questions, to his questions. All he cared about, all he was focused on was the fact that God was with him. God's presence was all that mattered to David. Martin Luther says it this way, I know not the way God leads me, but well do I know my guide. Here we see the connection between knowing God and trusting God. You cannot trust someone you do not know. But if you do know God and know Him well, you will trust Him even when you are in the darkest valleys of life. David fueled his trust in God by, not by constantly looking at his circumstances, but by constantly placing his gaze on his good, loving, and wise shepherd. So do you trust your shepherd? Are you putting yourselves in pathways of grace through meditating on his word and fellowshipping with others to point yourself upwards and to grow in your understanding of God himself? This leads us to our last question for today, which is, do you love your shepherd? The psalmist closes off this great psalm in verse 6 by expressing his deep love for God. He says, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David was saying here that there was nothing more than he desired than to experience God's presence for eternity. He didn't just want the blessings and the gifts from God, but he wanted God himself. This is one of the most helpful questions that you can, ans you can ask yourself which is, do you love your shepherd? Do you look forward to being with God, whether presently or for eternity? John Piper puts it this way, the critical question for our generation and for every generation is this, if you could have heaven with no sickness and with all the friends you ever had on earth and all the food you ever liked and all the leisure activities you ever enjoyed and all the natural beauties you ever saw, all the physical pleasures you ever tasted, 
and no human conflict or any natural disasters, could you be satisfied with heaven if Christ was not there? I think for many of us, we might feel convicted as we think about this question. And we might want to respond by resolving to love Christ more with our own strength and our own determination. We might think, I just need to love Christ more. And yet the only way to grow in genuine love for Christ is by responding to His love for us. As 1 John 4.19 says, we love because He loved us. So when we feel lacking in our love and affections for Christ, we need to meditate on His sacrificial love for us that ultimately cost Him His life. When we feel lacking in our desire to be with Christ, we must reflect on His continual pursuit of us and our hearts and His desire to fellowship eternity, eternally with us. When we feel lacking in our faithfulness to Christ, we should recount all the ways Christ has been faithful to us. Each day we can feel our love for Christ by remembering and meditating on His love for us and allow that to shape and transform our hearts. I want to end our time with a short story. There was a famous actor who was a guest of honor at a large gathering where he received many requests to recite favorite excerpts from various literary works. An elderly pastor who was in the audience asked the actor to recite the 23rd Psalm. The actor agreed, but only on the condition that the pastor would also recite it. The actor went first and his recitation was everything that you might expect. It was beautifully intoned with great dramatic emphasis added to the words. When he was done, he received a thunderous round of applause. The elderly pastor went next. Age had taken a toll on his voice and his pronunciation was anything but polished. But when he finished, there was not a dry eye in the room. When someone asked the actor what made the difference, he replied, I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. Lighthouse family, may we know, trust, and love our shepherd.